So I want to have a talk to you today about um, machine cooling, why I've done things a certain way, and why I believe them to be the right way. A lot of you all probably have your own opinions and your own preferences, and whatever works for you works well. I'm just going to explain why I've done things my way. Uh, so you've noticed the fan here on top, and it's actually pulling air through the whole machine and out through the bonnet couple of reasons why. This fan creates back pressure. It can only flow a certain amount of air through the fins. And the rest of that airflow gets trapped in and around this area here, creating back pressure. And you'll actually feel the air starting to come out the sides out here. Now that high pressure traps and locks that heat in here. So if we were to blow air through this radiator, same thing. We're trapping heat in and around these components. Yes, we're getting a great cooling temperature here at our um, radiator and possibly a hydraulic oil, but we're blowing heat in on the engine. Remember, the engine doesn't have any oil overheating protection. It'll just burn itself out. And you'll be looking at burning out your valves in only 150 odd hours, um, and premature engine wear, pump wear, and every other component. So you've probably all seen the ads for, a, for an air fryer and they brag about how they have three-way cooking, convection, conduction, and radiant heat. So what that means is they're blowing air over the element onto your food. So it not only blows the air in there, but it's transferring heat through conduction and convection. So when we blow air through this radiator, what's happening is we're transferring heat from each individual core into each everyone else and into the whole machine. But if we suck the air out, we're creating low pressure in through the fins and in through the, the machine, which reduces the heat transfer into all these other components. Now you'll notice this a lot, when this gets hot and I idle it down for a little bit, it just cools down really quickly. The whole machine's not hot. After four or five hours of running the stump grinder, it's not hot on the sides, it's not hot up here. We don't get hot air pumping out through these guys. Now I have added a second fan here at the back and it just assists a little bit. It just blows a little bit of cool air in over through the, the um, carburetor. It really doesn't do much. It's only about half the power of the main fan. And it does actually uh, contradict what I'm saying a little bit, but if I had more time, I would create a system of aluminium heat shields in here to direct the fan. So that fan really just directs and pushes that air in and around this zone here. The fan at the back has a secondary great feature. Um, as it's pulling air through here and, and blowing it in there, it's actually sucking air between your legs and keeping your balls nice and cool and keeps your operating station nice and cool. You're not getting blasted with hot air and a furnace. Now just have a look at the dust. The outside of the machine's pretty dusty. You can see up on here. But inside my machine, it's nice and clean. The com components aren't dirty. Up and top up here isn't dirty. Everything's nice and clean. So, you know, and most of our dust is generated up here in front. So by blowing air out through the front or pulling air through the machine and having it exit out through the front, we're pushing the dust away. You can see over on the side here, we're getting a little bit of dust forming on the outside where it's drawing in extra air. And I think it's working really nicely. Like we're, we're getting a nice draw right through this whole machine. Now I know what you're saying, a car. The air is being forced through the radiator when you're traveling down the road at 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour. But that's really not what's happening here. What's actually happening is this system of panels underneath here, the cowling and the suction created at the back here um, actually sucks the air through. If you were to take that bottom panel off, a lot of the air will dump before it and your engine will run hot. I've done this myself. I've uh, replaced a couple of engines in the past and I haven't put that on to like did the running uh, servicing and stuff like that. And I battled heat, you know, I checked water pumps, I checked this, I thought I had built the engine wrong, maybe I've got a tight bearing. So I did my research and I found out that 
without those bottom guards, your air is dumping before it even gets to the radiator. Now, the guys that race cars and run turbos, they're all looking for an air differential in and around the intercooler. What that means is we're looking for a lower air pressure around the, the intercoolers so that we get a better cooling rate. And that's what we've achieved here. By sucking the air out here with a high flow fan, we're not getting back pressure that's forming in here, trapping and locking heat into the system. We're getting a lower air pressure amongst our fins. So we're getting a, a good oil temperature. The heat soak into the whole machine is considerably reduced. It just doesn't get hot. Like you don't come up to it and think, wow, that's hot. Um, so yeah, that's basically why I've done this. Um, I hope it helps you. I hope, uh, I'm sure you've all got your own systems. I see a lot of guys stick a fan on the side here blowing in. I'd really like to see them sucking air out and just trying to create as lower pressure in and around this work area as possible. Like the whole design is counterintuitive and probably just wrong. Um, I kind of think maybe it should be reversed. The motor should be here and the pump out that way in a really large hydraulic tank at the back so that our exhaust has got a chance to run heat out through the top of this hood rather than locking it in here under all our controls. Um, but we've, this is what we've got to work with. This is the design they've chosen. So let's try and make it work the best we can.